Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel and in today's video we will be creating a CI CD pipeline in which we will push the code to the GitHub and from the GitHub we will push the code through Jenkins and after pulling the code from the GitHub we will test the code on SonarCube which is a static code analysis tool on which we can scan the bugs and vulnerabilities of the codes and also we can add the rules uh, regarding the scanning and then after scanning the code if our code passes, we will deploy it on Docker and everything will be done on EC2 instance so you will need three EC2 instances one for the Jenkins one for the SonarCube and one for the Docker deployment so then after deploying in on Docker we will access it on our browser just to verify if it's working or not so I have a website here which I've downloaded not long ago it is a basic HTML template as you can see This is the template that we're going to use and if you want to download template then you can search for free CSS and here's the website that you can download the templates from. You can just download any template that you want. So after downloading that template just extract it anywhere on a desktop or anywhere you want and after extracting the template what we have to do is we have to log into the GitHub. And after logging in the GitHub, just create a new repository. So I've created a repository called Jenkins SonarCube Docker, and in which I've also uploaded the code. And after pushing the code to the repository, what we have to do is we have to create three EC2 instances, one for the Jenkins. Let's just create a EC2 instance. Click on launch instance and just give it any name that you want let me just give it Jenkins and from here just select the operating system that you want to use so I will be using Ubuntu so I will click on Ubuntu and after selecting the operating system just select the type of the instance so I'm gonna select T2 medium which has two virtual cores and 4 GB memory and after selecting the instance type we have to create a key pair so we can SSH into the virtual machine so give it any name that you want let's just give it uh, SSH E Jenkins give it any name you want and then click on create key pair and as you can see the key is downloaded in the downloads folder and after selecting the key pair just scroll down and click on launch instance and it will take only a few minutes only a few seconds to launch and let's just create another instance while it's in pending state so click on launch instance again and then give it a name SonarCube so we will be using this instance for the SonarCube installation and then select the operating system also you have to keep in mind that SonarCube consume a lot of memory so make sure you have at least 2 or 4 GB of memory just for the SonarCube then select the instance type and from here we are going to select the key that we have created earlier so we are not going to cre create another key we are going to just use the older one and after selecting the key just click on launch instance so this is also creating and once it's, it's created just let's just create another one for the docker give it the name docker server and from here select the image that you want select the instance type for the docker I will be using T2 medium also and then select the key pair and just click on launch instance and once the instance is created as you can see the sonar cube is in running state and the Jenkins is in also running state so let's just SSH into the Jenkins instance just click on the instance ID that you want to SSH and just copy its public IP and after copying the IP just open your terminal and from terminal just go to the downloads folder by typing slash downloads 
and then the name of the key uh, then we have to type ssh hyphen i and then pass the key that we want to use so what was the name of the key that we created earlier it was ssh key jenkins so ssh key jenkins and after the key we have to type the username so whenever we install the ubuntu on ec2 instance it created it creates a user named ubuntu by default so we are going to use the default user and then pass the ip address and here we will get an error as you can see we got a permission denied error it says bad permissions for the key so it says the permission 0664 for the ssh key are too open it is required that your private key files are not accessible by others so what we have to do is we have to give it the permission so it can only be accessible by the current user so to change the permissions we have to type ch mode 440 400 and then the name of the key and now if we ssh we will be able to ssh into the machine as you can see we are in the virtual machine now so after getting into the virtual machine you have to type sudo apt update so we can up update it and then we we're, we're gonna install the jenkins in it and once it's updated we're gonna install open jdk 11 open jre 11 java runtime environment which is required for the jenkins installation so while it's updating let's just open jenkins.io on our browser and after opening the jenkins.io website click on documentation and click on installing jenkins and after clicking on the installing jenkins select your desired operating system in my case it's linux so i will click on linux and from here it says debian ubuntu so click on debian ubuntu and from here just copy the whole command and before pasting the command we have to install java runtime environment so to install the java runtime environment you have to type sudo apt install open jdk hyphen 11 hyphen jre just like yes and it's downloading now it will take less than a minute it depends on your internet speed so if you're using on ec2 instance then it will be as quick as that So the open JDK is installed successfully and now we're gonna install the Jenkins just paste the Jenkins command and hit enter and while the Jenkins is installing let's just allow the port 8080 so we can access it on our browser just go to the EC2 instance and from here just scroll down a little bit and you will see security groups in the security section and just click on the security groups and from here just scroll down and click on edit and bound rules so we're gonna allow the port 8080 on this specific virtual machine just click on add rule from here select custom tcp and here give it the port that you want to open in my case it's 8080 which is the default port for the jenkins and click on save rules and we have successfully added the security group rule and now let's just verify if, if the Jenkins is installed or not. Just type systemctl status Jenkins and here you can see it's running. And from here you will see something like this. What you have to do is copy the secret key here. Just copy it using the control shift C command. Uh, not the command but the key. And then go to the instance and copy its public IP so just copy the Jenkins public IP and paste it here and write the port 8080 and as you can see we can access the Jenkins web page it's loading it will take less than a few seconds so while it's loading let's just co copy our token it's taking a while to load let's just refresh it again and it's still loading so here so 
if you forgot to copy the secret key and it's not visible in the system ctl status jenkins command then what you can do is you can go to the certain path which is mentioned here and what you have to do is just copy the path and just type cat and then the path so it says permission denied just write sudo before the cat command and here you can see the key is also here the same key which you copied from the system ctl command just paste the key and click on continue click on install suggested plugins now the plugins are installing uh, it got some error then let's just retry so as you can see the plugins are installing in the background and while the plugins are installing let's just uh, look what we have done till now so we have created a server for the jenkins and we have also pushed the code to the github now what we are going to do we are going to pull the code that we have pushed to the github repository this code in the jenkins server and then we are going to set up the sonar cube server and from the sonar cube we will test the code if it's okay to deploy and if the code is passed then we will deploy it on the next instance which will be on docker so here the plugins are installed just create a user give it a username and give it any password that you want and give it the full name just give it any email address that you want then click on save and continue and click on finish now we can start using Jenkins so first what we have to do is we have to create a pipeline and to create a pipeline just click on new item and from the new item just uh, give it any name that just give it uh, automated pipeline and select the project type so in my case I will be creating a freestyle project and you can also look at the other projects but it's not in our scope right now so I will be just going with the freestyle project click on ok and once the project is created what we have to do is scroll down a little bit and from here you will see source code management you can also see it from here if you click here it will just bring you here and from the source code management we will be using git so we will click on git and here it's asking for a repository URL just go to the repository and click on code and then the and then copy the URL from the HTTPS tab and then just paste the URL here and give it a branch so our branch is main so I will just write main and after adding the branch just click on save and we also have to do one more thing here so just go to the configure again and just from here you will have to click on github hook trigger for SCM pulling so what this will do is it will just trigger the pipeline automatically whenever we make changes to the rep repository so just enable this option and go to the Jenkins uh, github repository and from the repository just click on the settings from here and we will be adding a github webhook so whenever we whenever we make changes to the code it will trigger the pipeline automatically and from here just look for webhooks here so click on the webhooks and after clicking on the webhook just let me just delete the older one uh, so it will ask me for the authentication let me just verify the access from my mobile phone
so i've approved it from my phone and now it should log in within a second yes as you can see we have logged in now click on add webhook and what we're going to do here we're going to copy the jenkins url which is the ip and the port just paste it and after pasting it type slash github hyphen webhook slash and then scroll down and from here click on let me select individual events and from the events we have to allow the pull requests and the pushes and then click on add webhook so now let's just verify the webhook if it's working or not so let's just build our pipeline without the webhook first to verify if it's working or not click on build now and as you can see the status is success so the pipeline is running successfully so now we're going to verify it using the webhooks just go to the repository and make any changes that you want first let me just verify and show you something so when you're in the pipeline just click on workspace here you can see we only have three folders two folders and two files which is one is html file and one is the config file and two are the folders one for the kit and one for the html website so let's just create a file here click on create file and just give it any name test.txt and just write something this is a test to verify the github webhook and just click on commit new file and it should trigger the pipeline uh, let's just go to the jenkins again and verify as you can see the pipeline is in pending state and it is successfully let's just verify as you can see the pipeline is working fine so what we have done we have automated this process till here so whenever the developer changes the code or add some file or anything in the code or in the repository it will trigger the jenkins automatically and jenkins will pull the code from the github we have done till here and now what we're gonna do we're gonna create a server for the sonar cube so let's just go to our different instance which is the sonar cube instance and copy its public ip then go back to your terminal just open a new tab and from here you have to do the same step ssh hyphen i and the name of the key which was ssh key jenkins and then the username and then the ip of the instance so we are into the sonar cube machine now let's just change its uh host name host name ctl set hyphen host name sonar cube also write the sudo before the command then type slash bin slash bash as you can see the host name has changed to sonar cube let's just do the same with the jenkins one so sudo host name ctl that hyphen host name and jenkins then type bin slash bash so its name also changed so we won't be confused if we're working on it So first let's just update the system update the repositories uh, sudo apt update and after updating the repository we are going to install sonar cube and for the sonar cube we need java 11 so to install the java runtime environment 11 just type sudo apt install open jtk-17 jre we need the java 17 version for the sonar cube so let's just install the java while the java is installing let's just go to the sonar cube website and after searching for the sonar cube just click on the download link and from here we're going to download the community edition so to download the community edition just right click on the download for free and copy the link 
and after copying the link uh, we have to paste it here and download it using the wget command So let's just type wget and paste the URL here and hit enter and as you can see the sonar cube is downloading right now and let's just see so here we have a zip to unzip it we have to install a utility called unzip so to install it type sudo apt install unzip and it's installed right now and to unzip it just type unzip and the name of the zip and it's I'm compressing it right now and as you can see we got the sonar cube folder here just go to the sonar cube folder and from here just go to the bin folder uh, my, my, my mouse is not working fine so let me just fix it will take less than a minute so it's working now go to the pin folder and from here there are three folders and it's for linux mac os and windows so if you're using windows then just go to the windows folder if you're using mac just go to the mac folder but i'm using linux so i will go to the linux directory and from here we have a tell file called a uh, bash file called sonar.sh so we are going to execute it using the dot slash sonar.sh and then there are some parameters that we have to pass so let's just not pass any parameter right now so i can show you we have four options the console shows you the output also uh, also the logs and the start command will start it in the background and the stop command will stop the sonar cube and force stop command will forcefully stop it and we also have the other options like restart, status and dump so we are gonna type console so we can also see the logs to verify if it's working or not so as you can see it's starting So it will take a few a few seconds to start the sonar cube. While the sonar cube is starting, let's just allow its port on the EC2 instance. So let's just go back to the EC2 instance and from here go to security and click on security group. And from here we're gonna add a inbound rule which will be 9000 port the sonar cube and from here we're gonna select the source which will be 0.0.0, .0. it means it will accept the traffic from all IPs and give it a name sonar cube and then save rule so as you can see the sonar cube is started and let's just verify the sonar cube by going to the EC2 instance and copy the IP of the sonar cube paste the IP and write the port 9000 so the sonar cube is working fine as you can see the page is opening so the default login username and password for the sonar cube is admin and the password is also admin and now just write the old password which is admin and replace it with the new one so I will also set the new password to the admin and then click on update so I think we have to write some other password so I will just change the password so now we have logged in into the sonar cube and from here just click on the project type is manual so we will click on manually and give it a name so I will give it the name Onyx website and then the branch also we have to give the project display key Onyx website scan and it should just give it the same project key here and now click on setup 
and after clicking on setup we have to use the ci method that we are going to use so we will be using jenkins click on jenkins here and from here choose the devops platform which is github and just click on configure analysis and then it's telling us the steps that we have to use just skip it and click on continue and also click on continue here and from here click on other so we are using the HTML project so we will click on the other and if you're using the maven cradle or dot net project then you can select it so i'm selecting the other and from here we have to copy two things so we have to open a text editor and copy this project key and paste it for the later use so we will be using it later and once you've copied the copied this just click on finish the tutorial and from here after click on clicking on finishing go to the admin user on the top right corner and from here click on my account and after going to my account just click on security and from here we have to create a token so i will just give it a name jenkins token or we can also give it the name sonar cube token and then select the token type so if you select the project analysis token it will only be specific to the specific project for example we have to select the project also so the, this token will only be authenticated for the this project but if you select the global analysis token it can scan all projects that are in your sonar cube installation so here you have to choose the expiry uh, let's just select it 30 days and click on generate token and from here just copy this token and also paste it in the notepad and now we have created a token and what we have to do we have to go back to the jenkins and from the jenkins we have to install a plugin go to the manage jenkins section and from here click on global tool configuration just go to the plugins not the global tool configuration we have to install the plugin first so just click on manage jenkins manage plugins and from here click on available plugins here search for sonar scanner uh, sonar cube scanner like the sonar cube installer plugin click on install without restart and we also have to install another plugin as you can see the sonar cube is installing so while the sonar cube plugin is installing the, let's just install the other plugin which is ssh to easy so our plugins are installing right now uh, let's just give it a while So our plugins are installed successfully and now let's just add the installation of the sonar cube. To add the installation what we have to do is we have to uh, go back to the manage Jenkins section and from here we have to go to the global tool configuration and from the global tool configuration just scroll down and you will see sonar scanner click on add sonar cube scanner and give it any name that you want sonar scanner and check the install automatically and then save it so after saving it what we have to do we have to go to the configure system now and from the configure system just scroll down and you should see sonar cube servers so click on add sonar cube give it any name that you want let me just give it sonar server and from here we have to give it the 
यू आर एल ऑफ द सोनार क्यूब जस्ट कॉपी दिस एंड पेस्ट इट हेयर एंड देन सेव इट नाउ जस्ट गो टू द पाइपलाइन दैट वी हैव क्रिएटेड अर्लियर एंड गो टू द कॉन्फिगर एंड वॉट वी आर गोना टू वी आर गोना एट अ बिल्ड स्टेप हेयर विच विल स्कैन एग्जीक्यूट द सोनार क्यूब स्कैनर एंड here just ignore everything and paste the token here that not the token but uh the key also just paste the key here and save it and now we have to go back to the manage jenkins and configure system because we also have to add the sonar cube token here which we haven't added yet and from here we have to click on add and from here click on jenkins and the token type will be the secret type will be it will be secret text and here we have to paste the token that we have copied from the sonar cube and give it any id so i will get give it sonar token and then save it then select the token from here and click on save now go back to the pipeline go to configure and let's just see if we have any other thing to add so we don't have to add anything else now let's just build our pipeline to verify if it's working or not so as you can see it's currently running now the sonar cube is scanning our code the scan is in progress as you can see from the jenkins uh, we also got the status success so let's just refresh the page and as you can see it scanned our code and our code passed so once our code passed we will deploy it on the docker server and let's just go to our third ec2 instance in which we will be installing docker from here just click on the instance id and copy its public ip then open the new tab of the terminal and then ssh hyphen i and the name of the key username and the ip so we are into the docker instance now let's just change its host name uh type sudo this host name ctl set hyphen host name docker then type bin slash bash as you can see the host name of the server changed and now just clear the screen and run the apt update command and while it's updating let's just install docker so to install docker let's just go to the docker website uh, or just search for docker install ubuntu and from here we have to start from here setting up the repository for the docker so we're going to be installing the tools that are required for the docker and I think I just closed my Docker server. Let's just start another tab. Uh, it's taking a while. It's let me just verify if, if the instance is working or not. So. it's in the running state let me just verify it by pinging it let me just ping it uh so our instance is not working and i think the ip is different yes so i was writing the wrong ip
Oh, so the key is also wrong. I also wrote the wrong key. Now, as you can see, we are into the Docker instance and now just paste the command that we have copied from the Docker Hub website. And just type yes. And let's just copy the other command to add the GPG keys. Just paste the keys. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna run the third command. Then we're gonna run the update command. Then we're gonna install the docker. So what we have done till now is we have pushed the goat code to the github then we pulled it through the jenkins then we scanned the code through sonar cube and after scanning the code we will be deploying it on the docker and then we will access it on our browser so now we're going to deploy the code from jenkins to the docker server then we will access it now what we're going to do here uh let's just verify if we have the keys installed so we have to do two things on the on both of the servers the jenkins and the docker server so first go to the jenkins server and switch to the jenkins user so now we are as jenkins user so whenever we install the jenkins it creates a user named jenkins let's just ssh the other server from here and verify if we can ssh it dot one six three so this server is the docker one four dot zero ips so we got some error it says permission denied public key so to fix this error we have to go to the docker server and from here just switch to the root user and from the root user we have to uh, edit the sshd config files sshd config so we have to uncommit this and and change the password authentication to yes then save it and restart the sshd service system ctl restart sshd now let's just verify it again and as you can see it's asking for the ubuntu password so we have to set a password for the ubuntu user which we haven't already so to change the password of the ubuntu user type pass wd and the username which is ubuntu and here just give it any password that you want and you can see the password is updated successfully and now if we type the password here we are into the ubuntu machine so exit it and then we are going to copy we are going to generate a key ssh keygen to generate a public and private key hit enter enter and we have generated a key now we have to type ssh hyphen copy hyphen id and the name of the server So the keys are added now. Let's just verify it again. So as you can see, we can get into the Docker server now. Let's just go to the Jenkins. And from the Jenkins, we have to go to the Manage Jenkins section. And from the Manage Jenkins section, we have to go to the Configure system. And here we will add the Docker server here so it can execute the remote commands on the Docker server and here we have to scroll down and look for server group center let's just add a group group name which is docker servers and the port and the username so uh, the username is ubuntu and the password is whatever password you wrote in the passability command 
then save it then go back to the many Jenkins and configure system and now scroll down and from here what we're gonna do we're gonna add um, here we added server group and now we have to add the server so let's just select the group select the group is docker servers and the server name is docker1 and just give it the IP of the uh, what was the IP of the docker server so just copy it from the EC2 instance <clears throat> and paste the IP then save it and now just go back to the pipeline and go to the configure tab and from the configure tab just scroll down and let's just verify it if we can execute the remote command uh, from here just look for remote command here you can see remote shell just select the remote shell and select the target servers which is this and let's just run a command called touch test dot txt let's just build the pipeline again to verify if it's working or not so it's it seems to be working so now the code is being scanned by the sonar cube and once it's scanned then it will run the remote command on the remote server so we got the success message let's just verify uh, just type ls and as you can see we got the test.txt file here so now what we're gonna do we're gonna go to the uh, we're gonna go to the repository and from here we're gonna add a file click on create new file and here it will be a docker file so just type docker file in the name the d is capital and there's no extension of the docker file and from here we're gonna use the image uh, nginx and then we're gonna copy the current contents of the directory to the user uh, let's just go to the nginx docker hub website and from here we will see what's the default path for the nginx so the default path should be user share nginx html let's just copy the path from here and go back to the github and from here just paste the path and now we're gonna save it commit new file and it should execute uh, it should trigger the pipeline automatically so let's just verify it if it if it's working or not so as you can see the status is, isn't pending and it will execute the pipeline in a second so our pipeline is executing now and once the pipeline is executed what we're gonna do we're gonna go back to the configure tab and from here we have to run a command uh, we have to let's just remove this remote shell and click on execute shell and from execute shell just type scp so basically what we're doing we're copying the current contents to the remote server so, so secure copy command and then the directory which is dot slash steric so we're gonna we're going to be copying all the contents of the current directory to the remote server which is ubuntu at the rate and then the ip of the uh, docker server then type colon and slash uh, where we we're gonna be pasting the file so let's just create a folder here uh, exit uh, make a folder here called website or any folder that you want mkdir website so now we have a folder called website here and what is the path of the folder let's just get its path which is home ubuntu website 
website and then just click on save and let's just build it again so we got an error here called failed let's just verify it what caused our website to fail so this failed because we added a docker file and it's finding the bugs in the docker file so let's just verify it again so as you can see it's failing because of the docker file so there's nothing nothing to worry about and we should not uh, put the uh, docker file in the repository but just to show you we are gonna uh, we're gonna put the docker file in the repository but it's not recommended to put it in the same repository you can also create a different repository for the docker file and then you can move it to the remote server using the scp command so we got a failure uh what failure we got so we have to add hyphen r after the scp command so it will also copy the directory and the con content inside the directory just go back to the pipeline click on configure and just scroll down and from here just type hyphen r and then save it then click on build now So as you can see, we got the success message here. Our pipeline is successful and let's just verify. Here, you can see the contents that we created are in the Docker server now. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna build the image and then run the container from it. So just go back to the pipeline and go to the configure tab. And from here, just go to the execute uh, just add a remote shell execute a remote shell and in which we will be just going to the ubuntu folder ubuntu website folder and there we will run the docker build command so first we have to verify if we can run the docker command from here or not as you can see we are getting an error it says permission denied so if we run the same command with the sudo it will work but with the current user it's not working so to fix this issue what we have to do is we have to type a command called sudo user mode hyphen a small and the g is capital so we're gonna be adding the current user to the docker group and here's the name of the group and the username is ubuntu then hit enter and then type new grp docker and now let's just type the docker ps command as you can see it's working now so now what we're gonna do we're gonna run a command called docker build hyphen t tag and the name of the image that we're gonna give it we're gonna give it my website and then the path of the docker file which is dot the current directory and then we're gonna run a container from this image so docker run detachable mode and the port so the port will be let's just give it 8085 and 80 so this is the port of the container and this is the port of the system in which uh, it will it will be exposed on the port 8085 and the container port is port 80 and then give it a name hyphen hyphen name is equals to uh, let's just give it onyx website and then the name of the image which is my website let's just save it and build it now so you can see it's the pipeline is executing right now it's building the docker image and now we got the success message let's just verify if it's if our container is working fine or not 
so as you can see our container is uh, working fine on the port 8085 but we can cannot access it right now because we haven't allowed the port 8085 so to allow the port just go back to the ec2 instance and here go to the security and from the security groups just add the inbound rule which will be custom tcp and port 8085 and the ip address the idr block which will be zero and the description will be on its website or you can give it any name that you want now save it and let's just verify it go to the instances copy the public ip just paste the ip and write the port 8085 and as you can see uh, the website is working but the css is not loading so So the website is working fine but the CSS is not loading so to fix it let's just do one more thing let's just remove the So it's using the bootstrap library which is not loading i don't know why what's the reason but if you try it with some other website it should work fine and thank you for watching the video glad this video helped you and let's just repeat what we did from the start so we pushed the code to the github and then we pulled it from the jenkins then we scanned the code through sonar cube and then we deployed on the docker container and then we access it through the uh through the browser so thank you for watching the video make sure to subscribe the channel i hope you like the video give it a thumbs up and hoping to see you in another video take care and goodbye